<laughs> so today we we'll continue our discussion of virtual memory. Uh, the three main concepts in today's lecture are going to be page replacement, which is something that we have started last time, frame allocation, and trash. Okay, so last time we talked about page replacement. When do you need, when does the operating system need to do page replacement? No free frames. Yeah, exactly. So that's the answer. And there are no free frames. So the point is, not every, not every page fault will result in page replacement, or we will not always need to do page replacement. We will need to do page replacement only if there are no free frames. So in this example that we went through last time, so this is the first in, first out algorithm. Uh, when we access page seven, uh, page seven is not in the, it's not in physical memory. So we had to load it from physical memory, uh, sorry, we had to load it from disk into physical memory. So that's a page fault. But we didn't need a replacement because we found a free frame. For zero, page fault, but no replacement because there is a free frame. For one, page fault, but no replacement is needed because there was a free frame. Now when we got to two, when we reference two, now there is a page fault and there is no free frame. At that point, we will need to do a page replacement. We will need to pick a victim. One of the frames that are in physical memory uh, needs to be picked and victimized by, uh, victimized by getting copied to the disk. Now, uh, last time we said that when we victimize a frame, we don't always need to copy that page into the disk. When do we need to copy the victim frame into the disk? Yeah, if it has been changed, if it has been modified. So we talked about the dirty bit, which indicates whether a page has been modified or not. So we talked about the first in, first out algorithm What's the weakness of the first and first out algorithm? Intuitively, why isn't it a good <coughs> algorithm? Here it resulted in 15 page faults. What's the weakness of this algorithm that makes it result in many page faults? You're just systematically uh, kicking pages out. You're not looking to see if that page maybe is used uh, quite frequently or if it's just a page that was needed maybe like one time or so. Okay, exactly. So the weakness is that it doesn't take into account how frequently a page is referenced. Uh, so it has no notion of how frequently a page has been referenced or whether a page is in demand or not in demand. It doesn't care. It just replaces the page that got loaded first. The first loaded page. But the page may have been loaded first, but it's a very, uh, you know, a page that's in high demand. It's a very popular page. The process keeps referencing that page, even though it has been loaded a long time ago. Okay, so this is Baladi's <coughs> anomaly. So this algorithm is so bad that sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you may increase the number of frames, you may increase the number of frames, but still get more page faults. You know, logically, when you increase the number of frames, you should get uh, fewer page faults. But with this algorithm, you know, Beledi noticed or observed that there are cases, so he constructed some uh, examples where increasing the number of frames uh, results in more page faults, which is, uh, which is anomalous, which is uh, unexpected, uh, which is counterintuitive. This is counterintuitive. But there are examples that can be constructed. So all what we need to know here is that this algorithm is not a, a good algorithm because it does not take into account how frequently a page is referenced. Now the optimal algorithm is the best. It takes into account the, how uh, a page, uh, how frequently a page is referenced, and it looks into the future. So here when we get to replacing a replacement for two, we look into the future, we, we see which one will not be, which page will not be used for the longest time. So our options are seven, zero, and one. This is what we have 
in physical memory. So we look at in the future. Oh, zero will be referenced very soon. It, it's going to be referenced next. So this is not the, uh, the best candidate. And we keep looking into the future. We find one. One is referenced later, but still sooner than seven. Seven is the one that will be referenced the latest in the future. And the one that will be referenced the latest in the future is the best candidate for uh, replacement. That will minimize the page faults because we will not need this for a long time. So we will be using memory uh, for a long time without having to worry about the page for this or a frame for this page. So that's why this algorithm is optimal. But what's the problem with this algorithm? Can't read it in the future. Yeah, exactly. So it's not, so this algorithm is impossible to implement in a real system. So it's not hard to implement, it's impossible. Because a real system doesn't know the future. The system knows the past. Now, given that we know the past, but we don't know the future, we can implement an algorithm that approximates this by looking into the past and Speaking for replacement, the page that hasn't been used for the longest period of time, or the, the page that, uh, yeah, the page whose last access, whose last access was the earliest, with the earliest last access or last reference. So, uh, you know, the idea of the next algorithm, which is least recently used, <coughs> is that, okay, this is our present, this is now, and this is the future that we are interested in predicting. And this is our past, and we know the past, we know, for example, we reference page one, then page two, then page three. So we assume that since page three is the most recently accessed or most recently used page, it's going to be the one that is most likely to be accessed in the near future. And this is, in fact, the concept of what? Locality. Local which kind of locality is this? Uh, temporal. Yeah. yeah, this is temporal. Yeah, exactly. This is temporal locality, which is this is the most recently used page, so it's the most likely page to be referenced uh, in the near future. Or the you know, principle of temporal locality is, if you reference something now, you are likely to re-reference it in the near future. That's the principle of temporal locality. Now, P2 is going to be less likely to be referenced in the future than P3, but uh, more likely than P1. So we say P2 is expected to be referenced next, then P1. So what we're saying here, what we are kind of considering the future or expecting or predicting the future to be an image of the past. So here there is, you know, this is your axis of uh, symmetry or reflection. And, you know, this is your thinking of the future as, a, as an image of the past. Okay, so this is the, the philosophy of least recently used. And it's not that complicated. You know, it's very intuitive because, like I said last time, we do it in real life. So if you have, a, a, you know, a, too many clothes uh, in your closet and you are interested in getting rid of some of them, uh, you'll get rid of the clothes that you haven't used for the longest time. So something that I haven't used for a long time, then I'm less likely to use it in the future, so I will get rid of that. Okay, so it's a, it's a very intuitive uh, principle that we do in everyday life. Uh, okay, so let's look at this example now. Uh, when we get to two, now we don't look at the future, we look at the past. And the least recently used is 7, so 2 replaces 7. Then when we reference 0, with 0 there is no page fault at all, because 0 is already in physical memory, so no page fault. With 3, 
uh, we look into the past and we have two zero and one so zero is the most recently used then two then one one is the least recently used so three replaces one okay so this is the least recently used algorithm um, okay now in terms of the number of page faults if you notice uh, the first and first out gave 15 page faults optimal gave eight page faults and least recently used for this example gave 12. so that's what you would expect with least re recently used you would expect fewer page faults than first in first out but you wouldn't expect it to be as good as optimal or as low as optimal what because about, yeah what about frequency um, is that something that, that we might want to consider um, uh, in, in, in looking back? Obviously, if it's something that's, that's been referenced or called on a lot, it'll probably still be in the frames. But is that something that, that we may want to consider when, when looking into pages that have been called upon? Uh, yes, but frequency is not as important as how recently a page has been referenced. So for example, if you have two pages, one page has been referenced 10 times in the, uh, in the past, but a long time ago, has been referenced 10 times, but a long time ago, and the page has been referenced very recently, only twice. Which one is more likely to be used in the future? One, there was only uh, the, the second one. Yeah, the most recent, yeah. So it's about recency, you know, the recent, is more likely to be used in the future. If a page has been referenced many times, but that those references have been a long time ago, it's, it doesn't mean that this page is likely to be used in the near future. Okay. Uh, so the least recently used, unlike the optimal algorithm, least recently used can be implemented. So it's not impossible to implement, but in fact, it's not easy to implement. So, uh, by the way, this is, you know, these algorithms, you'll be implementing these in assignment four, which I encourage you to do as, uh, you know, as soon as possible. It only takes a few, it should only take a few hours. So do it today if you can, and then you'll be done. It's, it's not an uh, extensive uh, assignment. Uh, and in, in your implementation, you don't have to worry about efficiency and practicality. So just come up with any implementation. And in fact, uh, you know, the implementation that you will probably, uh, will probably be the easiest for you is the counter implementation that we are about to describe, which we will discover is not practical for a real operating system. So the counter implementation will be a good choice for your assignment, but it will not, but it's not a good choice for a real operating system for the reasons that we will uh, we will explain next. So what's the counter implementation? The counter implementation is just associating a timestamp with each page, indicating when it was uh, referenced last, or indicating the timestamp for the last, or the latest reference of a page. So for example, in this, in this example, the timestamp for seven is gonna be zero, the timestamp for zero is gonna be one, and the timestamp for one is gonna be two. Then when we look for a replacement, each one has a timestamp, which one will we pick for replacement? Hmm? The one with the smallest. The one with the smallest timestamp. And that's what you will be doing in the assignment. Now, this, in a real operating system, this is not uh, feasible, in fact, because Thinking about it, you will have to associate a timestamp with each page or each frame that is in physical memory. Now, you'll have lots of frames, and th that timestamp will first uh, you know, take space, and you will have to copy the system time or the system clock with every reference to a page. So whenever a page is referenced, you will need to copy the system clock to that field, that uh, you know, that timestamp field for that page. Uh, 
And after, after doing all of that, when you search for the, uh, the replacement or the least recently used, to find the least recently used, you will have to find the page with the, with the smallest timestamp. So all of these steps are not, uh, you know, cannot be implemented in a, in a real system. Uh, you, you can still do that in the assignment because it's conceptual, but in a real system, uh, this is not going to be feasible. Uh, okay, another possible implementation is the stack implementation. So with the stack implementation, if you keep the pages in a stack, and whenever a page is referenced, you move it to the top of the stack. So in this case, if you if this is what you have, with two, after referencing two, you get this. Now, when you reference seven, you will move seven from where it is here to the top of the stack. So now, by doing this, whenever a page is referenced, you move it to the top of the stack. This means that the top of the stack will always have the most recently used, which implies that your candidate for replacement should be what? The bottom of the stack. Yeah. So if, if the top of the stack is the most recently used, the bottom of the stack is going to be the least recently used. But thinking about the implementation details of this, uh, if this stack is a doubly linked list, thinking of this stack, you know, implementing this stack as a doubly linked list, uh, now when, you, when we move seven from this position to the top of the stack, there will be lots of pointer updates. How many? Well, well in a doubly linked list, each entry will have a, a previous and a next. So when you move seven from here to here, you will have to modify the, the previous pointer and the next pointer for seven. And you will have to modify the next pointer for zero. And you will have to modify the previous pointer of four. And you also need to modify the previous pointer of two. And you need to modify what? As well. What's that? Next pointer. We counted that. We already <laughs> said that we would modify the previous and the next of seven. The head of the list. Yeah, exactly. The top, the top pointer, yeah, the top of the stack or the head of the list. So six pointer modifications that you have to make. This is still constant, constant time. Six is a, a constant number. But uh, this is, again, it's not a, uh, it's not a practical solution. Uh, because you know, creating this stack and doing all of these pointer updates is not something that uh, real systems would implement. Uh, so what real systems implement are approximations of least recently used. So least recently used is not impossible to implement, but it's not feasible to implement exactly, an exact implementation of LRU is not feasible. What systems do is an approximate implementation. And the roughest approximation is the reference bit approximation. What's the reference bit approximation? It's a very rough approximation of least recently used. The idea is to associate with each, uh, with each page a reference bit indicating whether it has been referenced or not. Now, remember that this is not as costly in terms of time and space as associating a timestamp. A reference bit is just one bit that indicates uh, whether a page has been referenced or not. Uh, and at any point in time, you know, each page will have either a zero or a one. Zero means did not get referenced since it got loaded. And one indicates that this page has been referenced. So with this rough approximation, when you need a replacement, you just pick any page with a zero, a page that has not been referenced since it got loaded. So this is a very rough approximation. 
Now, a better approximation is the second chance algorithm. So the second chance algorithm, you visit the pages in, in order, in first in, first out, uh, <coughs> but you use the reference bit. You look at the reference bit. If the reference bit is zero, you go ahead and replace it. Of course, you, you, you visit, you find, you do that whenever you need a replacement. So when, when you need the first replacement, here you go to this page and it's a zero, so you just go ahead and replace it. Then when you need a replacement again, you visit this, it's a zero, you replace it. Now, you get a third page fault and you need a replacement for the third time, you go to this page, but it has a one. One means that it got, it was accessed since it got loaded. So now this is a, a page that is likely to be referenced. So if it, if it has a one, and here we are trying to distinguish between the different pages that have ones. If it has a one, uh, I'm not going to replace it now, but I'm not just going to exclude it from replacement. So I'm going to reset the bit to zero to see if it will get referenced between now and the time I come back to it. Because I'm going to, through these in a, a in a, 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 in a circular queue, in a circular manner. So I will visit it again. So I'm going this way. So I will go visit all of these pages and then I will come back to this. So I will reset this bit to zero. So I'm going to skip it. I'm not going to replace it. I will give it a second chance. And then I will visit the other pages, consider them for replacement. Then when I come back to this, if it if it's still a zero, it means that it hasn't been referenced since I reset, which means that this is not a very uh, uh, highly referenced page or a page that is not referenced very frequently. So if it's a zero now, it lost the second chance and I will replace it. But if it's a one, then I will skip it again and reset that to zero. So in fact, I will keep giving the page a chance to show that it's a highly referenced page. And if a page is indeed highly referenced, you know, by the time I reset this to zero, and the time I come back to this point, the zero will change to one because that page is getting referenced. So this is a better approximation of least recently used. And it doesn't require much. All what you need is the reference bit, which is something that the operating system can set and reset. OK. So now this ends our discussion of replacement, page replacement policy.